still out there. My goodness, how things change so quickly here in Houston. But you know what? It is a lovely day regardless. Welcome back to Houston Life, everybody. Some say rosé is the official wine of the summer. And Tanji Patton is back to share this season's hottest wine on Thirsty Thursday. And Tanji, I love that you're trying to keep the price point below 20 bucks. Yes, rosés, that's the beautiful thing about a rosé. You do not have to spend a lot of money to get a wonderful wine. And the other nice thing I like about rosés, they pair with almost everything. They're bright, crisp, there's a nice acidity in a good rosé, so it will just pair with almost everything on your table. Well, and it also looks so nice. It They're looks pretty. so pretty. So They're let's pretty. start over here on this end. Tell us about the wine and what's what's this price point here? Okay, so what I divided these into rosés by region because okay. rosé is made all over the world. It originated back before Christ, really, literally 600 BC is the first notes I can find that have been taken on it. And really? the, the Europeans kind of really brought it to the new world. And it's just caught on here in the last few years. So because it's, of us. It's, yeah, it's one of my favorites. So it's, now, do you always serve rosé chilled? I do. I don't serve it ice cold. I, I, it's good ice cold, but honestly, with the white wine, the same thing. If you'll let it set out about 10 or 15 minutes, you'll start to appreciate a little bit fuller body and some more aromatics in the wine. I like mine to be not ice cold. Interesting. I always Drink like my wines a, like little, a little Drink colder. How you like it. So why don't we each grab a glass here? Because we're going to do some so tasting, right? So these are both from Provence. So these are your traditional style rosé. Uh, Provence is the south of France. It's Think of the beach. Think of lots of sun. The lavender. Mm. The lavender. And these wines, depending on where they come from, the vineyard, some will have more minerality than others because they get that nice sea breeze throughout the day and then cool off in the evening. Which so means it won't be as sweet, correct? It's not as sweet. Rosés, the true rosé is not a sweet wine. Now, there are sweet ones out there. Do you want to pour some for yourself, too? Sure. I'll, wanna... I'll try this other one. Okay. This is one I'm loving right now because the bottle and the wine are wonderful. It's called Fleur de Prairie. Traditional rosé, but if you can see the detail on this bottle, there are little flowers, perhaps oh, yeah, it's oh, almost like it's beautiful. Aren't they pretty? Like With the one that we just tasted, though, I think you can really taste that minerality to it, that it's not sweet at all. So if you like maybe more of those no. drier kind of wines, this might be a good well, one for you. And a drier wine often will pair better with food. That being said, if you've got a really spicy food, you want a more fruit-forward wine. And there are some fruit-forward rosés. Hey, can I ask you like a 101 question? Sure. I know it's very basic. So what if you're doing the charcuterie plate in the mm -hmm. beginning, right? You're mm -hmm. serving a wine. Do you serve the same wine through dinner or do you switch for the meal? Tangy switches. <laughs> well, but for regular people like us, you, would we switch? You do what you want to do. And I always tell people it's fun to pair wine. It's fun to figure out what goes really well with different things. It's also great just to drink what you like. You can do a rosé from start to finish. A rosé is perfect with charcuterie. And then you can graduate to a nice white if it's summer and it's 100 degrees. Okay. Drink what you like. I also like that a lot of the rosés are the screw caps. So if you don't want to yes. drink the entire bottle one night, you've got the screw cap option to put exactly. it back in the fridge. And I've got a dump bucket back there so you can try the next one. Okay. Oh, I hate to waste it. This is Los Dos, and this is a little different. It comes from Spain. It's a Grenache and Cabernet blend. So with this one, you're going to get a little bit fuller body, a little bit more flavor intensity. This is a lot of brightness, strawberries, things of that nature. You're going to get more of your bean cherry and maybe a little bit of dark cherry on this because of the Cabernet in there. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're, they're all a little different. different. Yeah, that one is definitely different. But they're all they're all good. So buy and drink what you like. This is a domestic rosé. This is made by Josh. Always a good wine producer. Always a great price point. Less than fifteen dollars a bottle. This has Barbera, which is an Italian varietal. Muscat, which is, think of a table grape. That's kind of how old Muscat is. And Syrah. So here again, you're going to get. Who's a Josh? little more complexity. That's, that's a great one because it's so easy <laughs> this, to remember. Who yeah. is Josh? Was the winemaker's dad. Oh, oh, hold on. I didn't. Don't oh, you don't want to mix. So, Tange, do roses always come in a blend? Perfect. No, no. They don't have to. The, the thing with the rosé, it's made differently, is because when the grapes are pressed, the skins are only left in there, depending on what the winemaker wants. It could be one day, it could be three days. The longer the skins are intact... The darker the, the color? Exactly. Ooh, and that's like why that. you get such a variation uh, of color in the bottle. It all has to do with how long the, the grapes were left, the skins were left 
in the juice. And this is something also that should be served cold. Maybe you let it uh, yeah. sit at room temperature I, for 10 stick minutes. Stick it in your fridge, let it chill down, and, and try it. Pour a glass, drink, take a sip of it, wait five minutes, and watch how it changes. And see see how you like it. See, I think this was just kind of smooth. You know, sometimes wines can have a little bit of that little bite at the mm -hmm. end and yes. the, the, the acidity to it. This is so nice and smooth that oh. on a hot summer day, you can just really enjoy I it. I love rosés. They're also great with oysters for oyster fans out there. This is a wonderful wine. Oh. Uh, this is Malderbosch. This is from South Africa. I love the name. Yeah. Malderbosch. You know, honestly, we've talked about this before, Tangie. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I will oftentimes, if I'm picking up a wine to take to a party, if the bottle is not no. pretty, I won't go for it. I know. You know? It, it's you all know, about the label and the bottling. Go for this one. <laughs> it goes back to we eat with our eyes. Yeah. If it doesn't look good, we're not as enticed. And I do agree with you. A, a label can go a long ways. Hey, one more uh, 101 question for you. Sure. So let's say you've had half a glass of wine. It's been sitting out for a while. It starts to get warm. Mm -hmm. Can you put an ice cube in it? Of course you can. I stick mine in the freezer sometimes if it's stayed out longer than I want to drink it. But that's not you know, like guys, now they have like rude. all the the wine yeah. balls and different things that you can buy and put them in the freezer and chill them. Don't think okay. of don't be a wine snob. Don't worry about it. Drink what you like. Okay. That, I mean, it's meant to be enjoyed, right? There's nothing like a glass of wine with a party to get people to start talking and opening up and relaxing. So don't make it more difficult. Play with it. Have okay. fun no, with it. I think it. this one to me tastes more of what the, the classic idea that you would have of what a rosé would taste like. Mm -hmm. That's to me, is that bottle. That's no, the South African makes a beautiful one. This is a little more fruit in this wine than what you may get on the others. But yeah, you the get strawberries. some strawberries. Yeah. And there's almost cherry, a bean cherry, a bright. Mm. You get yeah. that? Yeah, it's kind good. of fun. I get to see us sitting out on the patio, having some stuff on the grill, yeah. kicking back. Or maybe hosting a show in a mall, kicking back. Do you want to try a glass of wine? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we want to try another. <laughs> last but not least, another domestic. And I brought this one because the family that makes Camus, uh, the son is broken off and is doing. He did Mayomi. He did the Bella Gloss Pinot Noirs, which everyone loves. This is his rosé. Wait, the son broke off like there was a rift in the family? And oh, who knows? It's a wine family. There's always rifts exactly. in the family. <laughs> so, Tanger, are you seeing more and more in the United States, uh, a lot of the big name winemakers Everybody, starting to dive into the rosé world? Everyone's, yes, because it's become such a popular wine. It's an incredibly inexpensive wine. They can blend the wines and get the flavors they want if they're not a purist. You know, like They're the not Provence. wines you put down, right? You, you buy these, you drink these. Oh, yeah. No, you want, in fact, you bring up a great point. When I'm buying a rosé, I look at the date always. There are, with few exceptions, in Bandal, you can get away with a rosé that's maybe two, three years old. Some age more than that. Not many do. You want to buy the wine that's the most recent vintage. Oh. Always. With that rose. is a great tip. With that rose. is a great tip. Tangie Patton, thank you so much. We always oh. have such a great time. Please come back and see okay. us. Cheers. 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 And, of course, cheers <laughs> to your show that you can watch right here on KPRC on Sunday mornings. As she always says, DVR it because it is <laughs> Oh Dark 30 on Sunday. It airs at, what, 5.30 Sunday morning? 5.30 a.m. right before your news. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you again, my dear. And coming up next, Alfar from the New